Aloha mai kako. Um, I really apologize. Okay, we have some feedback going on. Mr. Yi? Yeah, that's it. Um, on behalf of the commission, but um, taking personal responsibility, I'd like to apologize for our late start this morning. We should have taken an earlier flight and insisted on that we did not. Um, so my apologies to you all who arranged your schedules to be here on time. We'll try not to repeat that. Um, the older I get, the more I realize that time is our most precious resource. The one thing we'll all run out of. So with that, aloha mai kako, good morning. This is the May 11th, 2022 Land Use Commission meeting. And this is our first in-person non-hybrid meeting since the COVID-19 pandemic began. And it's being held at the Hilton Garden Inn, Wailua Bay, Kauai. The meeting is being recorded via Zoom because we now do our court transcripts from our Zoom recording. Because of that, for all meeting participants, I'd like to stress the importance of speaking slowly, clearly, and directly into your microphone. Before speaking, it is helpful if you state your name and identify yourself for the record. Um, your participation is your consent to be part of the public record of the event. And so if you do not wish to be part of the public record, um, you should um, be aware that you shouldn't be speaking during this meeting. My name is Jonathan Lee K.K. Scheuer. I have the pleasure and honor of serving as the Land Use Commission Chair. We currently have nine seated commissioners. First time I've said that in a while. We have nine seated commissioners, yay. Um, along with me, Commissioner Edmund Axon. Um, Commissioner Nancy Cabral from Hawaii Island. Commissioner Dan Giovanni hosting us here on Kauai. Commissioner Lee Ohigashi from the island of Maui. Commissioner Gary Okuda, who also resides on Oahu. Commissioner Arnold Wong, also of Oahu. And our small but mighty and amazing staff. Our executive officer, Daniel Ordenker. Our, you can wave. <laughs> our chief planner, Scott Derrickson. Our staff planner, Riley Hakoda. Our staff planner, Tina Segura. Our chief clerk, Natasha Quinones, and our deputy attorney general for this meeting, Linda Chow, are all present today. Um, and Ariana Kwan is also here, um, who is um, the Empress of the Pacific. I don't know your official title. Um, Commissioner Skuike Kamakea Ohello and Commissioner Don Chang are excused from today's meeting. Our first order of business is adoption of the minutes for our April 14th, 2022 meeting. Ms. Quinones, has there been any written testimony submitted on this matter? No, Chair, no testimony was received on the minutes. Are there any members of the public who wish to comment on the adoption of the minutes? If so, please indicate by raising your hand. Seeing none, is there a motion to adopt? Commissioner Wong? Chair, I move to adopt. Oh, is it? Commissioner Wong has made a motion to adopt the April 14th, 2022 minutes, and Commissioner Cabral has um, seconded them. Um, since we are not virtual, we don't need a roll call vote. All in favor, say aye. aye. Anybody opposed, say nay. The minutes are adopted. Our next agenda item is the tentative meeting schedule. Mr. Ordinker. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, tomorrow we will be meeting once here once again for a presentation by our chair on the public trust doctrine. On uh, May 19th, we will be on the Big Island for the Church Hildall Manor. On May 25th, we will be on Oahu for the Chaos Waiava Matter. The June calendar, the first set of meetings is currently open. June 22nd, we will be um, taking up the KSY of a matter as necessary. On, in July, um, our first two meetings are currently open, but we would caution the commissioners not to release those days yet. On July 27th and 28th, we will be have new commissioners training session uh, in Honolulu at the Aloha Tower uh, or at, at a location to be determined. Uh, and on in August, we are 
currently open and that takes us through the rest of the year. Um, but once again, we would caution the commissioners to hold the dates until staff has assured them that we are, we do not have hearings. Okay, you probably need to speak directly into the microphone, Dan. Um, thank you very much. Are there any questions for Mr. Ordenker on our schedule? Um, sorry, I'd also like to acknowledge among the people in the audience is um, one of our newest commissioners who will start on July 1st. Um, also hailing from the island of Kauai. So um, thank you for being here. So, okay, moving on. Um, our next order of business is a discussion and action of, on the, a discussion and action on the election of land use commission officers um, for the period beginning July 1st. Ms. Quinones, any written testimony on this matter? No, Chair, no testimony was received on this matter. Any members of the public who wish to testify? Seeing none, Mr. Ordenker, would you please um, provide the commission with an explanation of this action item? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, currently, uh, we've had our chair for three wonderful years. Um, unfortunately, four, four wonderful years, oh my gosh. <laughs> Life's good. Um, and, uh, um, uh, as we all know, uh, Chair Scheuer is chiming out on his participation. Um, it is usually um, done at about this time that a, a nominating committee is assembled to um, nominate officers for the next fiscal year, um, starting July 1. Um, that includes a chair and two vice chairs. Uh, so it is up to the commission at this point to nominate a committee and then have the committee present its slate of officers, post slate of officers to the commission at a later date. Thank you, Dan. Commissioners, Commissioner Axon. Oh, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Chair, I would like to suggest to defer the uh, election or until the, all the new uh, commissioners on board and see it. Um, Dan, why don't you just... Um, Mr. Chair, uh, with regard to that, uh, traditionally the outgoing commission has nominated the officers um, in particular because the outgoing commission has the experience and the incoming commissioners do not. Um, I, Commissioner Axon, I appreciate, I appreciate the suggestion and we certainly don't wanna be sort of making decisions and binding unfairly our newest commissioners who are coming on. Um, however, um, while it is tradition and it is stipulated in the rules that every year we should take a vote, it doesn't have to be at this meeting. And I think there's, there's nothing that would pre prohibit a you know, the new commissioners coming on saying, hey, we don't like the choices you made. We want to redo this process. So um, so at least there's that protection. Commissioner Ohigashi. I, I just want to make a suggestion that the uh, existing chair head off the nomination committee since she's timing out that we uh, X on it. So Wong, Tosha Wong, the part of the group that is consulted together to come up with. Commissioner Higashi has suggested that the three outgoing commissioners, myself, Axon, and Wong, serve as the committee. Commissioner Axon, Commissioner Wong. Sure, I have no problem. Commissioner Axon. Chair, sure, that, that is the tradition. I'm okay with it. Commissioners, any concerns or thoughts? Okay. We certainly won't be self-interested. Um, <laughs> we'll solve that problem. Um, can somebody make a motion? Oh, General Kuda. Yeah, I'll, I'll make a motion that uh, the three named individuals be part of uh, or con constitute the nominating committee. And after that, I ju would just like to make a statement or a suggestion. Okay. I'll second that motion or statement and suggestion. Okay. Um, Commissioner Okuda has made a motion to... Um, have the three member, outgoing members of the commission serve on the nominating committee for officers and 
Commissioner Cabral has seconded it. Commissioner Okuda, you wish to speak to the motion? Yes, I believe that uh, the suggestion of constituting this nominating committee is a, uh, a good suggestion. It has people of experience and it's an efficient way of doing things. Uh, I would like to just add to that. Um, I would also be fine if at least the chair or the incoming chair would be selected ahead of time, but I uh, let me uh, suggest to the nominating committee that I would strongly urge everyone to uh, select uh, Commissioner Dan Giovanni as the next chair of the Land Use Commission. And the reason for that is I believe his record shows extensive um, experience in the community as the former executive vice president for operations at Hawaii Electric. He's had all these years of experience on the commission, including as vice chair. So just so that uh, the public and everybody else doesn't think that any of these suggestions are being done in secret, I'd like to just put that up front that I think the state especially would be well served if uh, Commissioner Giovanni is the next chair of the uh, Land Use Commission. And so that would be my suggestion and request that the committee consider Commissioner Giovanni as the incoming chair of the Land Use Commission. Thank you. Thank you very much, Commissioner Okuda. Is there further discussion on the motion? Commissioner Axon. Mr. Chair, maybe we don't need a uh, nominating committee. <laughs> <laughs> that is also an acceptable path. Though we have a motion. Um, hold it, Commissioner Wong. Uh, well, I, if we can do that action here, I would withdraw my motion. Uh, chair, we still have a second and uh, first chair and vice chair. We still got to work out. So I think we still should have a meeting on that with the pig. Okay. Uh, I mean, not. But they, yeah, that's the nominating committee. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner Wong. So um, the the suggestion, Commissioner Okuda, um, and um, the support expressed by Commissioner Axon is certainly noted. Any further discussion on the motion before us? Um, seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? The motion passes. Um, I believe our next agenda has already gone out um, and does not have this on the agenda. Is that correct, Mr. Ordenker? I was trying to pull up next week's agenda in here. Yes, that is, that is correct. Um, we weren't anticipating this. Okay, so um, we will report back at the subsequent meeting of the Land Use Commission. Commissioner Axon. Mr. Chair, just a clarification. So the nominating committee uh, has to finish their work by the end of the month? Uh, but we're going to be term out then. By the end of June. By the end of June. So our term is... We, we, we still have you for the entire month of June, Commissioner Axon. You have to cancel that yeah. Disneyland plan. <laughs> Tell your wife I apologize, but it's the law. <laughs> okay. Um, our next agenda item is an executive session matter um, with our council. Um, I'm going to suggest that we could take this out of order and actually put this to the end of the agenda and instead move on to the main substantive matter before us um, in respect out of all the people here. Um, do we need a motion for that, um, Council? Okay, is anybody concerned or object to that? Okay, so let's take this out of order and let's move instead to action item number four, DR 2176, Keikaha Agricultural Association, Kauai. Our main agenda item is this action item for docket number DR 2176, Keikaha Agricultural Association, Kauai, to consider one, to consider the petitioner's motion to amend the petition for a declaratory order to designate important agricultural lands for approximately 12,123 acres at Keikaha, Kauai, TMK 4-1-2-002, lot one, a portion thereof, and to continue action on the petition for a declaratory order to designate important agricultural lands at Keikaha on the same TMK. As these two matters are related, we will take public testimony on both agenda items at the same time. 
Will the parties please identify yourselves for the record, beginning with the petitioner. Uh, good morning, Chair, Commissioners, uh, Commission staff, uh, stakeholders, members of the public. Doug Kodaga, Outside Counsel for Kekaha Agriculture Association, petitioner. Okay. Good morning, Chair and Commissioners. Laura Barzilai. You want to almost be kissing the microphone Thank for you, it Chair. to be picked up. Yeah. Good morning, Chair and Commissioners. Laura Barzilai, Deputy County Attorney for the County of Kauai. On behalf of the County of Kauai Department of Planning, with me today is Jody Higuchi Sayagusa, who is our Deputy Director of Planning. Thank you very much. OPSD. Good morning, uh, Deputy Attorney General Brian Yee, on behalf of the Office of Planning. With me is Marlene Maki from the Office of Planning. Um, also with me is Earl Yamamoto from the Department of Agriculture. I'd also like to note for the Commission that in addition to um, in my presence, we do have Delany, Deputy Attorney General Delany Prescott Tate, who's here for ADC, as well as Colin Bao, who's here for BLNR. They have uh, elected to sit uh, behind us. Okay. Thank you. Before we continue further, let me update the record. At the conclusion of our December 23rd, 2021 hearing on this matter, the Commission requested the petitioner. OPSD and the county to provide position statements regarding the following matters for deliberation by the commissioner. One, who the appropriate applicant in this matter was ADC or KAA or another organization. Two, in the ADC supplemental testimony and references, um, the ADC January 31st, 2018 board meeting minutes filed with the LUC on December 17th, 2021, it was stated. Quote, although the ADC manages these lands, the fee simple interest in and, the land, and to the lands remains in the state of Hawaii through its Board of Land and Natural Resources. Therefore, simultaneous with this request that the ADC has requested that the land board also approve the KAA's proposed action. And regarding that quote, we asked for briefings on two matters. A, since BLNR holds the fee interest in the land, is it required that BLNR provide written approval of the IAL petition? And B, is the characterization of the fee interest contained in the paragraph still active? Third item, executive order number 4007 signed by acting governor James Iona filed with the LUC on December 17, 2021, which delegated various public land used for agriculture to be under the control and management of the ADC. We asked what powers or authority over their land were thereby granted to the ADC. Fourth, what is the distinction between management authority granted on state lands versus fee simple ownership? Fifth, does the state have an obligation to designate its lands that qualify as important agricultural lands all at once, or can they be done in a piecemeal manner? And sixth, is there a right to intervention in IL proceedings for individual parcels and or for state designation? of its lands as IL. On February 2nd, the LUC mailed letters to the petitioner of the county and the OPSD setting forth the questions to be answered as requested at the December 23rd meeting. On February 28th, we mailed and emailed a letter to the Department of Agriculture requesting the LUC briefs requested at the December 23rd hearing. On March 21st, we received the County of Kauai's statement of no position. On March 29th, the Office of Planning and Sustainable Development filed its statement of no position. On March 30th, the Commission received ADC's response to the LUC's request for briefs, which included ADC testimony, testimony from Josh Uihara, KAIL authority, and it exhibits A through D. On March 30th, 2022, the DOA filed a position statement. Also on that day, the petitioner, KAA, filed its brief in response to the Commission's February 2nd letter and exhibits A through C. On April 27th, the Commission received the petitioner's motion to amend the petition for a declaratory order to designate IL, a memorandum in support of the motion, declaration of Joshua Uihara, a certificate of service, and exhibits 1 and exhibits A and B. On May 2nd, the staff emailed and mailed the meeting agendas for our May 11th and 12th meetings to the parties and to our statewide and county lists. On May 4th, the Board of Land Natural Resources filed a memorandum regarding KAA's petition for declaratory order. On May 6th, we received the petitioner's letter regarding plans to file a motion to withdraw 
And from May 2nd through May 5th, we received te public testimony from a number of parties. Having updated the record since December, I'll first recognize any written testimony in terms of our procedures. I will recognize any written testimony that's been preceded, um, been provided. I will then ask for any public testimony from the audience. Is there, just a temperature check, is there anybody who's going to be providing public testimony on this matter today? I will call again. You, Mr. Lau, okay, I will call you. I'm just going over procedures. Um, after public testimony, um, we will then address the petitioner's letter regarding their intent to withdraw. Um, as to the mat find it following that, as to the matters contained in the commission's letter of February 2nd, we will receive oral testimony from the county OPSD and the Department of Agriculture with regard to their answers contained in the commission's letter. Um, the commission will have the opportunity to question any of the parties on their testimony. Following that, the petitioner will be given the opportunity to provide any additional oral testimony. Um, and then we will um, act on the commissioner's motion to withdraw. One moment. I apologize. I'm going to clarify our procedures again because I think I skipped a key step. We're going to take public testimony, then we're going to take up the motion to withdraw. If the motion to withdraw fails, we'll go through all those other things. I apologize for that. It didn't make sense to me as I was reading it, but couldn't figure out why. So, our procedures, I'll recognize written testimony first. I will then call on any oral testimony. Following that, we'll take up the motion to withdraw. If the motion to withdraw is accepted by the commission, we will be done. If the motion to withdraw is not accepted by the commission, we will then move forward. I will ask each of the parties in order if there's any questions on our procedures. Petitioner? No questions, Chair, thank you. County? No questions, Chair. Mr. Yee? I do have one question. Uh, may I suggest that the public testimony could be limited to the first item on the motion to withdraw and then be allowed to provide additional testimony depending on whether or not the motion to withdraw is uh, grounds or not? The request to restate the quest from um, the Council for the Office of Planning and Sustainable Development, it would be to limit testimony simply to the motion. Um, to withdraw. I, to me, that makes procedural sense. Is there any concerns from the petitioner? We support that amendment. Coy County? We support that as well, Chair. Fellow commissioners? Just have one concern. Commissioner Ohigashi. Uh, Mr. Lau, in the back, is he going to testify to the motion to consider or is he decided not to? Mr. Lau, if you would come forward, actually. Um, at this point, it's a little awkward because you're a witness, but you're also counsel for the state. Would you state your name and position for the record, please? Good morning, Chair Scheuer and members of the Land Use Commission. I'm Deputy Attorney General Colin Lau on behalf, on behalf of the Department of Land and Natural Resources and also for Chair uh, Suzanne Case. With me is Andrew Tellio, who's also from the land division. He's in, in the back in the audience. Um, our position is, is uh, I think what the question that was posed to me, is, uh, let me- Let me state the question that I have for you at this time before you give any further um, oral comment. Um, I'm proposing to the parties on this record um, that we request that testimony from the public, which at this point includes only you, be limited at first only to commenting on the motion to withdraw from ADC. Oh, okay, so you're you're asking if I have testimony. Do you have a concern with our limiting your testimony to that matter? Uh, no, Chair. Uh, I can give the testimony now if you would like. Uh, in, in just a moment, so you can stay okay. put. But I just want to make sure that we didn't get to that point and then you had an objection or concern with that. Okay, so. 
With the suggested amendment from OPSD, that will be our procedures for this morning. I will recognize written public testimony that we have received, and then we will take oral testimony. Um, we have received testimony in May 2022 from Richard Loero of Coquette Farms LLC, Anthony K. Pahela of Garden Island Security Incorporated, Dan Lord of Lords Electric LLC, Harold Edwards of ITC Water Management Incorporated, Matt Andros of Andros Engineering Corporation, Kalani Umi H. Martin from Umi's Farm, Maurice A. Winnichika of Wines of Kauai LLC, Alex Sue of Aloon Farms Inc., Lassen Young of Y Engineering Incorporated, Wallace Johnson of Hawaii Labor Solutions, and Mark Stoudemeyer of Corteva Sci AgroScience and the Hawaii Research Center, which for the latter name, I will disclose, I knew Mark Stoudemeyer in high school and have not seen him nor heard of his name since then, but I was pleased to see what he was doing. Um, those are the testimony. Is there anybody other than Mr. Lau who wishes to deliver oral testimony today? Um, seeing none, um, I'm going to ask for some advice from Ms. Chow. Ms. Chow, normally we swear in witnesses, um, but not typically counsel. Yeah, I don't think you need to swear. Okay, so if you would again, Mr. Lau, um, probably with mask off, um, state your name and position and your testimony, limiting your testimony at this point to the motion to withdraw. Should the motion to withdraw fail, we will allow additional testimony. Uh, yes, Chair, thank you. Um, I'm Deputy Attorney General Colin Lau on behalf of the Board of Land and Natural Resources. And our position is because of our written opposition to the declaration of state public lands as important agricultural lands, um, we would oppose the motion to withdraw just because we are on, want to we, because of the procedure that is being taken in this particular matter to designate through the, by declaratory action. I'm sure there will be questions if that's the conclusion of your oral testimony. It is. Um, let's start with the petitioner. Questions for the witness? Um, thank you, Chair and Commissioners. Uh, and am I understanding correctly that the Chair would like for me to direct my questions directly to this witness or to Mr. Lau? Um, Is that the yeah, so procedurally, no. and typically it's not another state agency, but a witness comes and every party in a proceeding yes. has the opportunity to question the witness. Thank you for You don't have to ex exercise that, but. Thank you for clarifying. So. I would like to just provide a little bit of background with regard to the Keka Agriculture Association. You, you may question the witness. Uh, as a preface to the question, um, Mr. Lau, would you acknowledge that there is a material disagreement between uh, the BLNR and ADC with regard to the scope and effect of the Executive Order 4007 and that that would support um, with, uh, the motion to withdraw? because of this uh, material uh, issue that the agencies are not in agreement on, that it's not prudent or reasonable to expect a petitioner to continue to maintain the petition um, under these particular circumstances uh, where there's a fundamental disagreement between the agencies uh, and the intention is to actually allow additional time uh, okay. for, for dialogue. I, I'm, that was a, a long question. So from what I understand, your, the question is whether additional time for dialogue between ADC and DLNR would benefit this process. Um, it, it, it may, but I'm just basing my position on the existing record or maybe the lack thereof. So to the extent that uh, Mr. Kodiga is suggesting that um, there be further development of the record by consulting with the Board of Land and Natural Resources. That would be beneficial in our humble opinion, 
However, the process to date, uh, just based on the process to date and the record to date, we, we were, are opposed to the designation of those public lands by this particular method. Uh, if I may, Mr. Lau, I understand. If you could please just clarify, th though, the, uh, the last statement you made about the merits of the petition. Uh, the, the petitioner's intention right now is to actually not uh, have additional time and effort spent by this commission or by the parties necessarily on getting into the merits or evaluating and weighing the merits of the petition. Rather, we seek to withdraw the petition for the reasons you just explained. Could you please clarify that? It's a difficult question to, to answer just because there are considerations, both consequences and ramifications of the withdrawal to the extent that should this petition go forward, uh, it's a two-edged sword. On one hand, it could be designated, in which case the, my client would not, is opposed to that designation. So to that extent, that would be bad. On the other hand, should it be denied, my understanding of the consequence is that um, the applicant may not be able to come back to the commission for a, a given period of time. One, one year. One year, thank you. So it, there are these consequences and um, just because of the concerns that were stated in our written testimony, we are at this point saying, well, just on the existing record, yes, um, we oppose designation. Should, back to his, his, uh, Mr. Kodiga's original question, which is, should there be further dialogue between ADC and BLNR? Uh, yes, I, I think that is a good thing. So is withdrawal in that sense, uh, something that we, we would support to that extent that BLNR's input could be solicited, the answer would be yes. But I cannot speak for the entire board because the entire board was not consulted in, the, in this particular existing record. Thank you, Mr. Lau. Again, um, just to make sure that we're understanding correctly, um, I'm hearing two things. One is that we're discussing a motion to withdraw, which is pretty straightforward, relatively straightforward procedural motion, which would take this petition off the table. That's the intention. To Mr. Carter, so, um, I'm, my if question, you have questions for the witness, yeah, so my please focus is, on questioning the witness. I, I, would, I guess I would ask Mr. Lau to once again, I, I'm hearing Mr. Lau discuss the merits, but we don't want to get into the merits. So I just want to make sure there's a a shared understanding, Mr. Lau, that um, the intention is to withdraw the petition so that there is no risk of, uh, if from BLNR's perspective. Mr. Uh, Kodaga, do you have a question for the witness? That is the question. I'd ask him to please. What is the question? Whether BLNR supports withdrawal on the understanding that it would remove any possibility of there being uh, a, a decision on the merits in support of the petition. I don't think I can give an answer to that, frankly, because it just, I don't know what the consequences are for my client. If they withdraw, and this is subject to their ability to resubmit, then to that extent, just to be honest to the commission, we're opposed to this particular process in this particular manner, just based on the facts that were presented to us. We don't understand. Do not think that the, the facts as regards to Mr. Kodiga's client will change dramatically even after consultation with BLNR. So to that extent, I, it's not a clear answer, but uh, okay. I, I'm sorry for that. Anything further, Mr. Kodiga? No further questions, thank you. Okay, does the county wish to dive into this particular pond? Chair County has no questions for this witness. Thank you. OPSD. Um, uh, thank you, Mr. Lau. Um, 
So the concern you've expressed on the withdrawal is that if they withdraw, you're concerned that they could file again in less than a year. Is that right? But BLNR has not engaged in it. One of the reasons you're concerned is of, about the petition is that BLNR has not engaged or, or the ADC has not engaged in a discussion with BLNR about this. Is that right? I think that's a correct word. Mr. Wall, can you make sure to speak directly into the microphone? Wouldn't the withdrawal allow ADC and BLNR then to have a consultation to resolve that concern? understanding is that ADC is not the applicant. Now, if, if my understanding is mistaken, I would appreciate that being clarified. But my understanding is the applicant is uh, ADC. Regardless of whether the applicant is KA or ADC or both, wouldn't the withdrawal allow BLNR and KA and ADC to have a discussion? And wouldn't that resolve one of the objections you have to this uh, petition? It would resolve one of the objections. There are many objections. And BLNR's ultimate position is at this time is that they did they are opposed to the IAL petition from being granted, correct? And the withdrawal of the petition would mean that no IAL will be granted for this property, correct? Right. So the only objection you have is that BLNR would prefer to prevent either KA or ADC from filing another petition within one year, and that you don't then want further consultation with KA or ADC for at least a year. No, I think our position was stated within the written testimony. And only if we go further into this procedurally would I be able to fully develop that So if the only question is would consultation between ABC and BLR resolve this matter, I believe the answer would be probably not. You know that without having engaged in a consultation with either KAA or ADC? I, I do not. Thank you. Nothing further. Thank you, Mr. E. Commissioners, Commissioner Okuda. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Mr. Lau, what is the applicable standard of review that the Land Use Commission must apply in making this decision whether or not to allow the applicant to withdraw the petition? What is the applicable standard? Uh, is, is this a question that has to do with the withdrawal? Yes, uh, because what, that's what all it? I'm focusing on is just the applicant's request to withdraw. What is the standard that we have to apply in making that decision? Let me be more specific. Is it, a, is it an abuse of discretion standard? Uh, I frankly don't know. Would uh, you? I'm sorry? I, I can... I could consult my notes, but I don't think that would actually help that, frankly. Do you have any legal authority that indicates it would not be an abuse of discretion standard? No, sir. What is your understanding of what meets the abuse of discretion standard? I, I'm... <clears throat> I'm not sure this is an appropriate question for BLNR given our testimony. Uh, I, I don't, uh, you can consult with your attorney about that specifically, but I, I frankly don't know. And I, I, I'm not sure why this is relevant to your motion to withdraw. You, because you, you can, the witness can just answer that you don't know. Okay, I do not know. Yeah, but uh, I'm, I'm willing to uh, re respond to your comment because you know we sh again, we should have everything on the table. It's because that if the department or any other party in the room believes we should be using a higher standard on what I view as a procedural request, 
then I, you know I, I'd like to be informed that we should look at a higher standard in making the decision. Let me ask you this. If an abuse of discretion standard is the standard to be used here, do you believe that based on the, the, the facts that have been submitted, um, or let me be more specific, based on the statements that have been made and the letter requesting withdrawal, that there's enough evidence in the record at this point to meet an abuse of discretion standard if we decided either to refuse to allow the withdrawal or allow the withdrawal. In other words, there's enough information in the record to support the Land Use Commission exercising its discretion either one way or the other. I, I don't believe that the, what is in the existing record would would be supportive or against withdrawal, frankly, because like as you stated, it is a discretionary standard for the for the commission. And I, I don't know what in the existing record would constitute an abuse of discretion. Okay, and let me ask this question then. What is the legal prejudice, and I'm using that specific term legal prejudice, to the board or the Department of Land and Natural Resources if the Land Use Commission agrees with the request to withdraw the petition? What is the legal prejudice that the department or the board would suffer? I don't believe there is a legal prejudice in that sense in answer to your question. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chair. No further questions. Thank you, Commissioner Okuda. Commissioners, further questions for the witness? Commissioner Wong. Thank you, Chair. Um, Mr. Lau, sorry, just not non-attorney here that just wanted plain and simple, you know, okay. So if they withdraw, they withdraw the petition, they would join it, right? They may not bring it back to us. But if we, if we go through this process, we either deny or approve. Let's say we deny. That's an assumption again. They cannot come back anyway, right? So the question is, if they withdraw and no come back, isn't that the same thing? Yes. It, it's it's difficult for me to answer yes or no to that because as I noted in my testimony, yeah. there are consequences one way or another and ramifications depending on what happens. Yeah. I cannot tell considering that it's a sort of a yes or no decision tree that happens as a result of that uh, withdrawal. Oh. So to, to just like simply answer your question, if they never come back, then there is no prejudice, it's fine. Yeah, it's just that I'm thinking like just a regular guy, non-attorney that says, okay, they were drawing, they're not gonna come back. And if they do come back, you guys get time to work with all the state agencies to figure out what to do and then make it a cleaner case. So either approve or dis disapprove, okay? But right now, let's say we, deny this withdrawal, we're going through the process, you know, you guys present your case, the petitioner got to present their case, county, you know, all the parties that present their cases. And then we're going through another process to say, okay, if we approve, we approve. If we deny, we deny. But if we deny, it's again, wasting our time because, you know, I'm not getting paid for sitting here. So no makes sense. I mean, the local guy here says, this don't make sense that we're wasting everyone. That guy is a billable guy. He's making more money than me just sitting there, a petitioner, right now. Right? I mean, well, it doesn't make sense. Sorry. I'm sorry about that, petitioner. But, I mean, he can be, you know, I don't want to get the, the guys pay more money for him. It, it's, sorry, I, I can't put two plus two together. 
And if so, I think you know, it, for non-attorneys, it no makes sense. In if you think of it in long run, okay, because you still say, oh, we still didn't, we still like to kill this petition. So it doesn't add, add up for me. So that's my statement, okay? I mean, if you wanna answer that, that's fine. If you don't wanna answer it, that's fine, but it's just a statement, okay? Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioners? Chair has um, a question for Mr. Lau. And Mr. Lau, I, you know, I, I want to thank you for your written brief on your, um, your written testimony to deny the petition. That was very clear. Your oral testimony this morning has confused the heck out of me. Um, so, and I think that my fellow commissioners have gotten me part of the way there, but I wanna work with you to try and understand. Your oral testimony today is that you are in opposition to the motion to deny or to, to accept the motion for withdrawal because you would prefer that we go through the process and instead deny. Is that a fair statement of your oral testimony today? It's a fairly good summary, but all the little details that I think were discussed by questioning with Mr. Kodiga and myself have kind of on the wayside. So um, frankly, this is just public testimony before the commission. The commission Correct. has the discretion to decide the motion as they, they would like to. Correct. And, you know, whether Bilinar is not even a party in this. We understand. That. And so all I'm presenting is public testimony. And your public testimony is the desire of the chairperson of the Board of Land Natural Resources is opposed to the acceptance of a motion to withdraw because the preference is to go through the procedure and deny. No. Uh, so please clarify for me what your testimony is. I, I think my, my testimony uh, I've stated the testimony, which is we are opposed to the designation and only on, in that sense would we oppose the motion to withdraw. Um, I'm only trying to relay what my client has I, I, said to me. I will try not to kill the messenger. Sorry, um, I appreciate that. So, um, so, so work with me here. I'm gonna ask you some questions. Um, your client opposes the motion to withdraw because the client opposes the designation. Of public lands, of state public lands through the declaratory action process, yes. Okay. The practical consequence under our statute is that if we accept a motion to withdraw, um, the applicant or presumably another applicant for the same lands would have the opportunity to come in immediately thereafter with a new petition. The consequence of denial would be they would be barred for one year. Do you share that understanding? I, I do. Okay. So the only practical difference for your client is whether or not a petition may be filed between now and 365 days from now, presuming we acted on a denial today. Is that correct? I believe so. Okay. Um, so this is a, stated as a personal opinion intended to give some assurance. Um, I don't wanna speak and prejudge for the commission, but I will observe at the conclusion of eight years that we do get irritated <laughs> significantly. Um, and um, I think it's fair to say this petition, because of some of the very issues that you are bringing up in our, your testimony has irritated this commission and should, without any meaningful consultation with the Board of Land Natural Resources, this petition be refiled, at least if it's refiled while I'm here, we wouldn't look favorably on it because these outstanding questions were still to be considered. 
So on a practical level, while I understand that legally they have this window to come in within a year, on a practical level, the operative question, at least for me, if it comes in while I'm still here, is have you guys worked this out or not? If you haven't worked it out or not, we're going to get to the exact same place. And I don't think that your client's going to be harmed. Does that make sense? It does. Thank you. Commissioners, anything further? Commissioner Ohigashi. Anything further, Commissioners? Commissioner Cabal. Yeah, I wanted to say that this is somewhat unusual. We've had a number of these cases come before us and we've resolved, we've gone forward with some, denied some, and had some withdrawn. And it's it's always rather confusing because it, um, there's always a variety of reasons why one wants to put their property in this position or not. And so I think the underlying elements are something that would be good to be heard, but at the same time, if the petitioner's not ready, I have to I think I'm gonna have to support their decision to want to withdraw, and then they can be get ready rather than have to be put off for a whole year, potentially until they can be come before us again. So thank you though for the input and the information. Thank you, Commissioner Cabral. Are there any further questions for this witness? Seeing none, thank you very much, Mr. Lau, for your testimony. With that, before we proceed any further, the petitioner desires to withdraw their petition as contained in their filing of May 6, 2022. Mr. Kodigo, please represent your request. Thank you, Chair. Um, and we appreciate the participation of BLNR in shedding light on these issues. Um, with regard to the motion to withdraw, just to provide a, a bit of additional background for the benefit of the chair and commissioners, um, it's fairly straightforward in the sense that the petitioner uh, was proceeding on a certain assumption about the legal effect of executive order 4007 and also uh, which of the two agencies, meaning ADC and BLNR could provide the necessary authorization as the landowner, as the commission is well aware, the petition is required under statute and the commission's rules to obtain, obtain uh, present the authorization of the landowner. These are fundamental and critically important issues. This is why the commission uh, in its wisdom asked us to brief these issues and we did extensively. We note the record also reflects that ADC uh, spent some extensive effort uh, reauthorizing the petition. So a lot of effort has gone into this, but uh, frankly, the BLNR memorandum that was submitted about five business days ago has uh, called all of that into question. And so we it's fairly straightforward with regard to the motion to withdraw in the sense that obviously more time is needed to resolve this issue. As the petitioner, not, one, not a state agency, a farmer, uh, we simply lack the necessary resolution of this critically important issue at this time. And uh, we, we simply need more time to address this. And we certainly prefer uh, echoing some of the comments we heard a moment ago to do that in an e as efficient of a manner as possible. We don't want to be using time and resources our own or those of other parties um, unnecessarily through a litigated process if we, if we believe that we can find other more efficient ways of going forward with this, which we believe are possible. Um, with regard to the memo itself, uh, we, I would just note that it does raise a number of issues that we would like an opportunity to address, but we simply have had, not had time, frankly, to be fully evaluate it and I have not had time to review it and go through it with my client. Um, we are aware that the uh, ADC board may consider at its next meeting on May 18th whether to request a formal Attorney General, Attorney General opinion letter on this issue. When I mention that only as a, as an indication of how there are other non-litigation methods or pro ways for us to proceed to kind of address this issue, in addition to the dialogue that Mr. Lau just uh, mentioned and which we strongly support. Um, we, overall, this would promote administrative efficiency, conserve the commission's resources. Um, we note also that 
There are situa uh, proceedings, uh, IL proceedings and district boundary amendment proceedings as well uh, in the record in which it appears that uh, withdrawals have been uh, accepted by this by the LUC under a similar situations or even in some one instance it appears after a vote was taken by the commission. So the point there being that we believe there is uh, this, that the granting the motion to withdraw would be consistent with how this commission tends to approach these types of matters. Um, and I just want to end, end by mentioning that, you know, we, we certainly respect the BLNR's position on these issues, including on the motion withdrawal. Our intention is really, we're laser focused on IAL designation more than uh, other procedural or, or, or sort of larger, potentially larger issues between agencies. We just want to uh, my clients are really laser focused on trying to obtain the benefits of the designation because of the benefits to the farmers, which is all about agriculture and supporting agriculture. So we did move, you know, as quickly as we could when we received the BLNR memo um, by the, uh, which was about midday. And by the end of the day, I had consulted with my client and we said, look, we need to withdraw this and step back and talk about it, engage in dialogue find a way forward because we don't have a uh, resolution between the agencies. And we did communicate that to the commission as promptly as we could. And we did receive guidance that it was appropriate to uh, pursue a motion, an oral motion pursuant to rule 70A, 15-1517A, which is the rule upon which this um, motion to withdraw is brought. So we've certainly done our best to respect the process and respect the commission's work and also, uh, I want to emphasize again, we respect BLNR's contribution. We just seek an opportunity to further dialogue and then consider whether we come back or another party comes back with a petition in the future. So we're, you know, we'll have, we don't know. We can't say sitting here today exactly how that will play out. Chair, thank you for the opportunity for, to uh, present that background um, on the motion to withdraw. I have no, nothing further on that. Thank you very much, Mr. Kodaka. Commissioners, questions for the petitioner? I'd like to thank the petitioner for trying to fight the procedural morass we're in, refocus our minds onto helping agriculture succeed, which really would be a much more fun discussion. Um, comments from the county related to this matter. Thank you, Mr. Chair. County does not oppose petitioner's motion to withdraw the petition. County views this as a matter, excuse me, county views this matter as a necessary discussion between two state agencies, ADC and BLNR, which must be resolved outside of this forum. Thank you. Commissioners, questions for the county? Sorry. <laughs> Commissioners? <laughs> Mr. E of OPSD is next once I'm sure that none of the commissioners have questions. Commissioner Okuda, questions for the county? Uh, yes, uh, similar questions that I asked the uh, the attorney for uh, Department of Land and Natural Resources on the board. Are we to follow an abuse of discretion standard in making the decision whether to allow the withdrawal or not allow the withdrawal? It's an abuse of discretion standard. Is that correct? Commissioner, of course, it would be my preference to check into that further in research, but in listening to your questioning earlier, I would agree, and I would also agree that BLNR's statement is in the record, which supports the motion to withdraw and allows you to make that decision. So do you believe the record is sufficient for us to exercise discretion either in granting the request to withdraw or denying the request to withdraw? In other words, there's a sufficient record to meet an abuse of discretion standard, whatever we decide. Based upon the last meeting and the filings to date, I would agree with that statement. Thank you very much. No further questions, Mr. Thank Chair. You. Thank you, Commissioner Okuda. Further questions for the county? Um, I will ask OPSD and then DOA if there's any comments. OPSD. Uh, thank you. Thank you. 
the Office of Planning and Sustainable Development supports the motion to withdraw. We, I, I mean, I will say that I think the petitioner should have engaged in a consultation with BLNR before this. That was a mistake. But we are here um, where we are now. And I think KAA also made the correct decision to withdraw their motion when they saw BLNR's objection in order to engage in that discussion um, between KAA, ADC, and BLNR. And I think the Office of Planning and Sustainable Development is also willing to be part of the conversation if that would be helpful. I, I just want to take a few minutes to take a larger look at where we are and what this is. The IAL process is an imperfect one, but is the only one we have in order to achieve the constitutional obligation to conserve and protect agricultural lands in the state. Part of that process required DLNR and Department of Agriculture to get together and identify those public lands that should have been designated as IAL by 2010. It has been so long since then, and they haven't done it. I understand DLNR uh, has concerns, and those are concerns are legitimate. They should be considered, they should be worked out. Uh, that, that discussion absolutely needs to happen. But the effort to delay the consideration further for, for no particular reason as, as far as I can tell, other than it's gonna delay, the, the objection to withdraw for no reason other than it would delay another petition is just a further delay on an important obligation the state has to identify those lands uh, which should be designated as, as, as important agricultural lands. Um, this particular piece of property was, was frankly perhaps not considered when we originally looked at or conceived of uh, the process because of the, because of, of this frankly somewhat unique circumstance in which the ADC lands are not quote unquote public lands as defined in statute when that's the term that's used in chapter 205. I, I think chapter 205 was really intended um, to provide that state lands uh, be done through a consultation between DOA and DLNR. And it was just somehow missed that there is a small sliver of lands, a uh, small a number of acres that are actually held by other agencies um, that, are not, that are not defined as public lands. And this happened to be one of them. And so when, when this exception or, or loophole was, was uh, discovered, the Office of Planning was um, not opposed to considering uh, a petition by a farmer or, or collective uh, to do something that, that the state should frankly have done much, much earlier. That's in general, that doesn't address whether these particular lands um, should be designated as IAL. And that requires a discussion between ADC, KAA, and BLNR. So while we certainly uh, believe that this, this conversation needs to happen, and as um, was admitted by BLNR, they don't know the outcome of those discussions. Uh, there is no reason we think that the LUC should deliberately prevent uh, this petition from coming back if these substantive matters can be resolved. Uh, there is no reason to put an artificial uh, delay in moving forward and getting lands designated as IAL. And so for these reasons, the Office of Planning supports the motion to withdraw. Thank you, Mr. Yee. Commissioners, questions for the Office of Planning and Sustainable Development? Commissioner Ohigashi. So Mr. Yi, um, there was discussions by counsel for the petitioner that indicated that we'll be seeking an attorney general opinion between ADC and Board of Land 
natural resources. Yeah. Assuming that that opinion falls in line with four reasoning is it the position of Department of Planning and Sustainable Development that the petitioner can be the existing petitioner? I, I'm going to rephrase it a little bit because of the, the way you've worded it. Uh, I mean, because KA can be the petitioner. That's because they're a farmer, they can be a, a petitioner. The question is whether they, whose approval did they need in order to bring the petition? Was it only ADC or did they also need BLNR's approval? So I believe that deals with the question of how to interpret chapter 205 and how to interpret the somewhat esoteric questions of state ownership and who speaks on behalf of the state. If they determine that BLNR's approval is needed for that, then I fully suspect and expect that OPSD will agree with or comply with the Attorney General opinion. It, well, would you like me to answer Commissioner Okuda's question? Oh, okay, then I will. Then I will not answer. The question. Commissioners, Commissioner Wong, please answer Commissioner Okuda's question. I, 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 I think you were asking what is the standard um, by which the the LUC should should or should not grant withdrawal. Um, I, I think it is not clear in the rule. The rules just don't say. Uh, so you can't really look to the rules. Uh, at, so because there's nothing in the rules, my best answer for you is uh, it is probably a good cause uh, uh, standard, which is reviewable by the appellate courts on an abuse of discretion standard. So that would be my uh, best guess because it's a procedural matter uh, dealing with the conduct of your hearing and generally, appellate courts will defer to the trial court in decisions on the conduct of the hearing and the process in which the hearing is held. Further questions for OPSD commissioners? Seeing none. Mr. Yamamoto, does the Department of Agriculture have any position they wish to share on this matter? Commissioner okay, Earl Yamamoto, Department of Agriculture. The department uh, takes no position uh, regarding the petitioner's request, request to with, withdraw. Okay. Any questions for Mr. Yamamoto? Seeing none. Commission will now enter into deliberations whether or not to grant or deny the petitioner's request to withdraw their petition for a declaratory order. Commissioners, what is your pleasure? Chair. Commissioner Wong. Uh, I move to accept their um, motion to withdraw. Um, and is there a second? I'll second that. A motion has been made to accept the petitioner's motion to withdraw by Commissioner Wong and seconded by Commissioner Cabral. I will allow the Movant and the seconder to speak to their motions. Uh, there's nothing really, I, I, there, to me, it's just plain and simple common sense. They want to withdraw their motion, they withdraw it. I mean, that's sorry, that's just common sense. Commissioner Cabral. Oh, I'll speak to it also to the point that it hopefully this gives the opportunity for all of the parties involved to move this forward to have time to get together to understand their points and to come back to the LUC um, with a package that everyone can support, hopefully, and therefore comply with our state requirements to have more land set aside for agriculture in the future. Thank you. Commissioners, we are in deliberation. Commissioner Ohigashi. Yeah, I'm gonna support the motion. However, I would like to make a statement that I think 
that kid. I agree with Mr. Yi. They was failed adequately consult with the Department of Land and Natural Resources and to make sure that they have their ducks in line before this. But th these issues were brought up at the last hearing. And, the, and these issues were brought up by commissioners who, 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 who were very concerned that the Board of Land and Natural Resources was not involved. And, I, I, and for a commissioner who was not here, I think today, I think she was very concerned. So I'm, I'm, I don't understand, and I don't like the idea that the petitioner failed to do that. And I think that going forward, any petitioner trying to utilize state land would consult the actual owners or the, at least the people who are designated in the statute itself. And I think it's the Department of Agriculture and part of that is true. So. Commissioners, further deliberation on the matter? Where? Commissioner Giovanni. I'm going to support the motion. I concur with the comments of Commissioner Oigashi, and I want to add to them just briefly that at the former hearing on this matter, it was evident that the petitioner had not fully consulted other parties that were had an interest in the, the petition going forward, namely KIUC and the Department of Hawaiian Homelands. Hopefully all of that can be resolved ahead of time with better consultation of the affected parties, including BLNR if you decide to come back. Thank you, Commissioner Giovanni. Commissioners, further deliberation? Um, Chair is inclined to grant the motion as well. Um, and I thought the Council for the County of Kauai summary of the good cause that exists in the record was um, convincing. Um, I believe we have good cause both for the common sense reason that it is hard to move a petition forward if a petitioner no longer wants to do it, um, as well as for the substantive issues around um, who actually has the legal authority to do this. Um, I do share um, Mr. Yee's um, gently but clearly worded frustration with the lack of consultation that occurred. This has not been a productive, necessary use of many of our time. And it has distracted us from what Council for KAA um, has said should be our focus on improving agriculture in the state. It, it is frustrating for a number of reasons, including the fact that I recognize and knowing some of the individuals who are deeply involved with KAA, these are people who want to farm and farm successfully and produce food and jobs and an agricultural economy in Hawaii. Um, but I just wanna, before I call for the vote or any further questions, wanna just pull out the lens a little bit further. Um, in, in her collected Aloha Noyao, um, Mary Kavena Pukui actually has a number of collected statements about how the Manaa Plain is a land of mirages. Um, and uh, it's sort of like, we're seeing another version of this. And really, the, the, this is not the first and you know, those from Kauai will chuckle. This is not the first controversial issue around the future of agriculture in the Manaa Plain that has roiled this community, right? Um, it has been tough. This has been a tough area that has caused some really, really harsh divisions on this island. Um, and we have a couple, we have three major state agencies involved in the area, DHHL, DLNR, and DOA, um, and ADC as part of that. No one, I believe, has stepped back and tried to stop thinking about these lands from the plantation era and gone beyond and really started to have a conversation about what should this whole part of Kauai be? 
we're acting within our narrow individual institutional interests and not actually asking the land and the people from this land what should be going on here. And I think non-fighting, cooperative, collaborative, and forward-thinking solutions for the West Kauai will come if we stop thinking about what is ADCs, what is DLNRs, what is DHHLs, but instead talk about what was once, you know, among other things, not just an incredibly productive agricultural reason, but region, but also one of the key wetlands in the entire Pacific. Um, we're thinking about this area in a, through all these narrow laws and narrow things and missing the big picture of what this area should be. And to me, that's when I think about why do we get involved in these long and arcane and confusing and you know, frustrating conversations because we haven't actually started with those fundamentals. Commissioners, Commissioner Okuda. Chair, I'd like to join in your comments. I, I really think just two things. Number one, all of us, including us here on the commission, we got to get out of our silos. And what we really got to ask ourselves is where is Hawaii or where should Hawaii be 30 to 50 years from now, and how are we gonna get there collectively? Because if we don't do that, our kids aren't gonna be here in Hawaii. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Okuda. Further comments from the commission? Seeing none, Mr. Ordenko, would you please pull the commission on the motion to withdraw? Thank you, Mr. Chair. The motion is to accept the petitioner's motion to withdraw. Commissioner Wong? Aye. Commissioner Cabral? Yes. Commissioner Giovanni? Aye. Commissioner Ohigashi? Aye. Commissioner Okuda? Yes. Commissioners Chang and Commissioner Kam Kamaka Kamakea oh, oh, hello are absent. Chair Scheuer? Aye. Oh, oh I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I got the name up at the top, but I missed it. <laughs> Commissioner Axon. Aye. Sorry, my apologies, I Commissioner Axon. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. The motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Mr. Ordanker. There, this motion has prevailed. Um, the other agendized matters on this docket, the motion to amend and the petition for declaratory order for designation are rendered moot. The com it is 1034. The commission will take a 16 minute recess till 1050 when we will reconvene with the deferred agenda item regarding consultation with our attorney general and executive session. Um, and so should there be any, thank you, Council, should there be any fear that we will then secretly take up other business, the intention is to exit executive session and then immediately publicly adjourn the meeting for the day and resume our meeting tomorrow. Thank you very much to all the parties. We're in recess. Is there no further business? Then if so, I was going to say, quote the immortal rap record or at the end of loving you and serving you, minus the COVID. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>